When I was growing up, this was the barbell exercise, the bench press. So in today's video, we're gonna give you some tips on how to improve your bench press. The first thing, Coco, stand up for me, is uh, be a little anal retentive and make sure everything's nice and lined up and dialed in. So even space on both sides of the barbell compared to the uprights. And then you look for the center knurling and get your bench lined up right in the middle of that thing. That'll just make all of your reps consistent and make it so that when you unrack and re-rack the bar, things are going where they need to be going. So the next step is for Courtney to go ahead and lay down on the bench. And when she lays, lays down, I want her eyes on this side of the bar. I don't want them way down on this side of the bar. I just want them, I want them just on this side of the bar. The next thing I want from Courtney is for her to pinch her shoulder blades together real tight. So Courtney, actually stand back up and I wanna show the camera. So Courtney is going to pinch her shoulder blades together like she's trying to squeeze my finger and she's holding this retracted position during the entire set. She's also using her feet to drive her legs backward, which is placing the contact point on the bench. Instead of it being here, she's thinking about putting the contact point on the bench way up here. So Courtney, let's pretend you're lying down on the bench and put your hands up in front of you. Courtney cannot bench with a, with a vertical bar path. If she does, she's going to impinge her shoulder joint. It's just an unfortunate design feature of the shoulder. What she has to do is slightly tuck her elbows, which means the barbell, instead of coming down roughly here, is gonna come down kind of mid-sternum. So the way to do that and protect your shoulder joint is to pinch your shoulder blades together as far back as you can and bring your chest up so that it limits the amount of space. It's, it limits the distance that you have to create between your shoulder joint and where the bar touches on your chest. The longer that distance, the more inefficient the movement is. So we wanna minimize that distance while protecting the shoulder joint. So Courtney's going to get her shoulders nice and tight. And uh, as a coach, I'll sometimes push and squeeze together and ask the trainee to shimmy those shoulders underneath their back. I'm noticing that her eyes are on the south side of the bar. I'm then going to ask her to take her grip um, at the correct width. And the way you do that on a standard barbell like the starting strength bar is the trainee extends their thumb to the point where the smooth part meets the knurling on the bar and then wraps the rest of her fingers around the barbell. Um, just like on the press, when you high five the bar in the press and you turn your thumb down to make sure the bar sits in the heel of your palm, the same thing applies on the bench. So Courtney's going to turn her hands to make sure the barbell is in the heel of her palm, exactly. And then when she takes her grip, she's thinking about pinching the barbell between her hands and her finger pads. So go ahead and squeeze that barbell nice and tight, Courtney. Lock out your elbows. So here's the dangerous part. This is the most dangerous part of anything we do in the gym. It's the trip from the uprights to over her shoulder joints. Now, why is that? It's because when we bring the barbell over the shoulder joints, it crosses over the neck. So for safety, don't ever unrack or re-rack a bench press with bent elbows. Lock your elbows out so the weight is being supported by your skeleton, not by your muscles. So lock it out, bring it over your neck. Don't let it hang out over your neck, directly over your shoulder joints in balance. I can look at it from the side to make sure the bar is directly over the shoulder joints. And then I'm going to ask Courtney to plant her feet into the floor. So plant your feet hard, Courtney. I want you to retuck your shoulders under your back, and then I want you to push against me like you're trying to slide off the back of the bench and use that force to arch your back. That's leg drive. When you're locked in tight like this, each rep is more consistent, and you'll find that it'll be easier to make progress over time on the bench. So again, Courtney's not gonna bring the barbell straight down over her shoulder joints. She's going to put the barbell right there about mid-sternum, and it helps with a tactile cue to actually touch the trainee's chest so they can remember that spot in their mind and try to touch the bar to their chest at that point. Now, how do you make the rep consistent when you bring the bar up to over your shoulder joint again? The way you do that is when the barbell's locked out over your shoulders, you gaze up at the ceiling and you pick a spot on the ceiling between your gaze and the barbell. So Courtney's going to pick a spot on the ceiling between her gaze and the barbell. She's going to fix her gaze on that spot of the ceiling. She's going to touch the barbell to that point on her chest, and she's going to put the barbell exactly to the same spot upon lockout. So Courtney, make sure your shoulder blades are tucked behind your back. They're nice and pinched. 
Make sure your feet are planted into the ground. Leg drive with an arch back. Take a big breath and hold it. Touch the barbell to that point in your chest. Put it directly back up on the ceiling. Cool. From that position, which is a tough spot to coach from, it looked like she was tucking her elbows too much. So I'm wondering if maybe her grip is too narrow. Let me show you how to find out. Courtney, go ahead and take your grip. I want you to do a rep, but hold the position at the bottom. What we're looking for at the bottom are vertical forearms. Notice here at the bottom that the tip of her elbow is in front of her wrist. So if she's not tucking her elbows enough, her elbow will flare out, which puts a whole bunch of load on the shoulder and makes the movement much more inefficient. So I'm always checking at the bottom to make sure that the tip of the elbow stays in front of the hand and all the way back up. So Courtney, drive that barbell directly into that spot in the ceiling we were looking. Do it again, do a complete rep. Take a big breath, go. This time don't pause, big breath. Rack. Let's talk about programming for the bench. So when you're doing the starting strength novice linear progression, you'll be benching one and a half times per week. You'll be pressing one and a half times per week. So on week one, you'll bench Monday, you'll press Wednesday, you'll bench Friday. On week two, you'll press Monday, you'll bench Wednesday, and you'll press Friday. The way you progress this lift is with three sets of five with around a five minute rest between sets, and you'll go up roughly five pounds per workout. After several weeks on the bench going up five pounds per workout, you'll need to drop to two and a half pounds per workout. Same thing applies with the press, by the way, but that happens much sooner than it does on the bench. If you are benching alone, you should bench inside the power rack and you should set the pins because the bench, again, is the most dangerous lift in the weight room because if you happen to get stuck under the bench and you can't get the weights off because you've collared the bar and you have no safeties, that is a bad situation. It's an even worse situation if the bar is stuck on or falls on your neck. So take the bench seriously, get a competent spotter. In the absence of one, make sure you bench in a power rack with the safety set. If you need help with this, we can help you anywhere in the world with an online coach. So it's onlinecoaching.ssgyms.com. If you live near one of our gyms, even better, we can help you in person, ssgyms.com. If you wanna own one of these gyms, you can apply for ownership at own.ssgyms.com. And if you'd like to become a coach, go to coach.ssgyms.com. Thank you.